going on YouTube? It's Aaron here, coming to you from the trenches. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about this little box here, the bidding strategy for your Google Ads. So if you don't know, Google Ads works like a bidding um, platform. So pretty much you bid a specific amount and if you win that bid, you get to be on a specific spot of the page. And then if a person clicks on that ad, that's when you pay, you know, the cost per click. So I'm going to go through the different bidding strategies and let you guys know which one or which ones are the best for you, depending on your situation. And no, it is not manual CPC. You're going to hear about which ones are the actual best ones in a minute. So let's get right into it. So if you don't know me already, my name is Aaron Bogle and pretty much what I do is I run an agency for clients, pretty much managing their Google ads and or their Facebook ads for the most part. And most likely you are a person who wants to do this for other people as well, or maybe it's your own business too. And you want to learn, okay, what are the best bidding strategies for Google ads that can get me the most leads, most conversions, the most sales. So you're in the right spot, but before you watch any more of this video, be sure to hit a like button and subscribe and comment below. What's your experience with Google ads? And if you have like, you know, how many years have you been doing it? And you know, if you're a complete beginner, Tell me that and tell me what are your biggest what are your biggest questions with Google Ads so I could make more videos that can help you out. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the automate the bidding strategies uh, that Google has to offer. So first let me explain the difference between automated and manual bid strategies. So automated bidding strategies are ones that Google is gonna make the bid for you. So it's kind of like giving a kid money and just being like, okay go get me X amount of results. I don't care how much you spend in some of these bidding automated bidding strategies for the most part, right? So I'm gonna explain which ones they are, but there's some automated bidding strategies saying, hey, you give a kid money, so hey, you can't do this, this, or this, so get this. But then when you say get this, that's actually, you know, the same thing, but you know, you're not spending as much overall. That's the best way I can really explain it. And manual bidding strategy is pretty much you going out there and getting you the, um, the result that you want by, you know, setting your own bids, setting your own maximum cost per clicks. A lot of people say, oh, don't trust Google, don't do automated bidding, but automated bidding can actually be really useful if you have this one thing working for you, which I'll get to soon in this video. But the thing is, if you don't have this one thing, then automated bidding can just be something that sucks the money out of your wallet. I'm going to first explain, you know, I'm going to go in order of, you know, the worst ones you can you, you can choose depending on what your situation is. And then I'm going to go to, you know, the best overall ones you can choose overall. So honestly, the, the worst bidding strategy, in my opinion, that I don't see any really use for it is to use target share, impression share. So... Also, just by the way, I have used the ones I've talked about that I've used. I will say that I've used and I will say my personal experience with using that specific bid strategy. But target impression per share is one that I haven't really used. It's just trying to get your ads shown as many times as possible. So with what that means is that it doesn't matter what time your ads are showing up, who they're showing up to, you know, the demographics of those people. It's just going to try to get you, you know, either anywhere in the results page, the top of page, which is what you would want, or the absolute uh, top of page, the percentage you want of impression share. So let's say 70%. So impression share is pretty much out of all the impressions that Google has to offer, how many impressions you get. So for example, if Google gives out 100 impressions, or if there's 100 impressions on your ads, which is an impression, again, is just how many times your ad is just seen. So the amount of times Google just shows your ad and someone just sees it, doesn't matter what they do. Um, so if Google has a hundred of those and they, in total of a hundred of those and you're able to get 70 of them, your percent impression share is 70%. So what you can do is set that 70%, um, you know, at the top of the page and then you can put 70% and then you can set a max cost per click limit as well, which I would highly, highly recommend. Because if you don't 
you know, it's like you're giving a kid money and you like you said, hey, just go get this thing. I don't care how much money you spend. And then the kid just goes and buys, you know, the most expensive thing when he could have gotten, you know, the same exact thing for cheaper, maybe elsewhere. So what Google's going to do is it's going to optimize your bids. It's going to adjust your bids, either going to increase it or decrease it at, depending on when other people are bidding as well. So that way it can get you to the top of page results, let's say 65 percent of the time and if you set a maximum cost per click limit um google will let you know if it needs to be adjusted in order for that to in order for it to actually help you reach the goal but overall if you don't set that it's going to you know try to get you as close as this as possible but the thing is with target impression share is that unless you're a big company and you you know if you're a big brand and you value your name to be seen as many times as possible because you're also doing a whole lot of different expensive advertising as well this isn't really necessary because there's no goal attached to it so you know just because someone sees your ads doesn't mean they're going to spend money on you doesn't mean they're going to call your business etc etc so the only real way i would use it is that if i was working with a big brand or if I just had, you know, an ad that I knew that so many people loved, which is rare, <laughs> that, you know, no matter what, if people just see it, they're just going to click on it and they're just going to buy it for the most part, right? But overall, I really wouldn't use this because there are just other better bidding strategies. So the next types of bidding strategies I have used. So one that is better than target impression share is, but still not as great, is maximum click. Maximum clicks do excuse me, is that it's going to try to get you as many clicks as possible within your budget. But note that this is going to spend your budget. So if you have a budget of $50 a day, Google is going to make it its goal, its mission to spend your entire $50 per day. And just by the way, if you're ever just confused or if you don't know, you know, which is the best bidding strategy, you can always click on, you know, learn more. And then this pop-up menu is actually really good at explaining what Google does. So the great thing with maximize clicks is that you can actually set a maximum cost per click limit. So that way Google doesn't go too crazy and pays too much for a click. So this is good if you have a pretty big budget, if you have a pretty substantial budget and you want to collect a lot of data on, you know, how good your ads are working, how, um, good your landing pages are for etc etc and you want to collect even pixel data so let's say you have a facebook pixel or you have you know the google analytics pixel on your site so that way you can you know or the google remarketing tag excuse me so that way you can retarget those people you know through facebook ads through um google google display ads etc etc so if you just want traffic to go to your page so you can maybe retarget them later or you have a good retargeting strategy, this one can be really good for you. But just know that Google is going to try to spend your entire budget because sometimes in order to spend your entire budget, it may pay more for a click than what is exactly necessary. So that is maximize click. Again, use it if you just purely want traffic to retarget for the most part. And the next one is the next useful one is mash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. It will push it to a new audience and it really helps me out. Thank you very much. So let's get on with the video. Next one is maximize conversions. And this is the same exact thing like maximize clicks. But instead of trying to maximize your clicks, it's going to try to maximize your conversions. And of course, before you can do, you know, maximize conversions or target CPA, or target OS, and target maximize conversion value, you're going to need to set up conversion tracking, which I talk about in my Google Ads uh, for local businesses uh, video. But maximize conversion and maximize conversion value is pretty much the exact same thing. Um, it's just pretty... Maximize conversion value is that when you set up conversions, you can set up how much a conversion is worth to you. And then Google's just going to try to maximize that. But it's overall, it's literally the same exact thing. It's going to push, it's going to show, give you impressions from people who are in the right age and demographic, the right timing that are going to, are likely to, you know, click on your ad, not only click on your ad, but do the action that you want them to do, whether it to be call your business, make a sale or convert. But the most important thing for maximize conversion, so this is the one thing that you need, is that you need data on your Google Ads account for this to work in the best way, shape, and form. 
because if you don't have any conversion data, Google is not going to really know, okay, what type of people lead to conversions for, for your specific business. And because of that, Google is going to make shots in the dark being like, oh, this might be a conversion. This might be a conversion. This might be a conversion when it may not be. And since Google likes to spend your budget, they are going to, you know, they might spend, you know, $56 on one click that doesn't even convert. That is exactly what happened to me when I used maximize conversions on a client campaign that did not have any conversion data yet. So if you're just starting out, do not start out with maximize conversions. It may sound enticing, but you need some conversion data. You want at least 15 conversions within the last month or so in order for maximize conversions to work very, very well. You can get away with 10, but you just need some sort of conversion value in order of conversions on your Google ads. So that way Google knows, okay. And then three females age 50 converted for you. So let's show your ads to people who are aged, you know, 50 as a female. That way they're likely to become a conversion for you. Yeah, like we'll take $30 for that click, but we're pretty sure that's gonna be a conversion for you. And since that's based on your conversion data, that likely is to be a conversion for you. But overall, Google is again going to spend your budget. So again, be careful about that. So the next best thing is like, hey, I want to get as many conversions as possible, but how can I, you know, keep the costs at a reasonable spot? So this is when the next best ones, which is ones that I use, is Target CPA and Target ROAS. Target ROAS is the same thing, Target Return on Ad Spend. So pretty much you want to, if you want a 2x return on ad spend, same thing. Target CPA is what I use. Um, and pretty much it's just you set up price being like, okay, I'm, I want to pay $45 per conversion. What Google's going to do is they're going to try to show your ads to people. So that way um, they're going to convert at $45 or less. But, you know, they, they may convert for more. But the average, Google is going to try to get you to around your target CPA amount. So for the, in this case, you know, you're going to, you know, again, you need to set up conversion tracking. But then it's going to ask you, how much do you want to spend for um, a conversion action? And I'm going to show you, you know, the power of target CPA if you have conversion data, if you do it for a campaign that has that data already. So we can see here when I turned on target CPA for a bit, we can see that, you know, the actual CPA was $41.23. And we spent a total of a little under $950. We were able to get 23 conversions at a conversion rate of 30%, which is insane. And this is the power of target CPA. So my conversion action, I think it was set at 50 before, but then I changed it to 42 before I took the screenshot for, for my client. But we can see here that, you know, once we turn on target CPA, you know, the really big benefits that it could really help you with if you have that conversion data. Same thing with target ROAS, you can just set, you know, I want to get a 2x um, ad limit return on my ad spend. But be sure to actually set your target CPA to something that's actually reasonable that Google can actually do. Because what's going to happen is that if you set it too low, Google simply just not going to show your ad and then you might end up getting no conversions because of it. So pretty much because of this target CPA, you may not get as many impressions as you do with maximized conversions. But if your target CPA is healthy enough and it's big enough, you're still going to get a good amount of impressions and those impressions are likely to convert for the, the cost that you want them to convert, which is really, really nice. And this is pretty much where you want to go up to with Google ads. That's through the automated bidding strategy. So the worst one, in my opinion, is target impression share. The best one is target CPA, target ROAS. But when you're just starting out, you're going to need conversion data. So what's the best bidding strategies to use? So if you, if you, if you have a big budget, use maximize clicks. But if you don't, use manual cost per click. So what manual cost per click is, is pretty much you are making your own bids. And then you can also set bid adjustments depending on the device 
their demographics. And I'm sure you guys how to do that in my Google Ads for local businesses video. So overall, you set your own bids at the keyword level. And because you set the bids at the keyword level, um, you are in full control. So Google's not going to spend, you know, more than X amount of dollars that you set as your max cost per click. So the thing is, this can work great if you're constantly looking at the campaign, if you're constantly, you know, visualizing it just to see, okay, I need to adjust the bids, you know, at this specific time, I need to decrease at this specific time. So if you're constantly like on your screen and, you know, looking at, looking through conversion data, looking through the de uh, demographic data, say, okay, you know, this demographic works better. I can increase, I can increase or decrease the bid adjustment. I can set the cost per click to this amount or this amount. This is good. But overall, you know, that's when automated bidding strategies come into play because not only does it take in, does it take in the factors like the time of day, the day of the week, demographics and um, all that stuff, but there's a lot of other um, points that Google doesn't show us that, that they could use to help you get more conversions as well. So overall, to starting out, manual CPC um, is great. But once you get some conversion data, you definitely want to take advantage of the Google algorithm and do target CPA because you can still control the cost for the most part. Once you start with manual CPC, once you're getting like, you know, a couple of conversions, then you can turn on enhanced CPC, which overall what it does is that it will raise or lower your bids depending on, you know, if you choose to maximize for your conversions or maximize your clicks or get more clicks for the most part. And it's only going to increase your bid or decrease it by 30%. How enhanced CPC works is that let's say, you know, let's say your max cost per click for a specific keyword is $10, but you know, it's searched at a time where convert the conversion is likely the demographic Google thinks that this person at this specific time is likely to convert with enhanced CPC. It says, okay, I know you said your max CP, your max cost per click to $10, but I'm going to move it up to $12 to give you that click. Because I really think based on some of the data that you have, that it's going to be a conversion for you. You're giving Google pretty much a leash. It's like an automated bidding with a leash saying like, okay, you can do a little bit of what you want, but mainly you have to stay within this range. And this could be good to help you get even more conversions because especially if you have data before, you know, you still pretty much hold, are holding on to the main range, but you know, you're giving Google automation a little bit of power and letting you helping you get more conversions or more clicks. So start out with manual CPC, get, you know, a couple of conversions. I would say like five, five to six conversions or like three to five conversions. Then you can turn on enhanced CPC, give Google a little bit of automation. And then, you know, if you're getting more conversions, if you're liking the data that you're getting back, you can definitely go to the automated bid bidding. Then you can choose target CPA or target ROAS. If you have a big budget, or let's say Google's not spending all of your budget that you currently have, then you can go and you want Google to, then you can go to maximize conversions because that way it's not going to, you know, there's going to be no restrictions for the most part. It's going to spend your entire budget. But if you already have stuff that works, you already have conversion data, this can be really good. I have used, I forgot to mention, I have used maximize conversions for a client, the same client I actually used target CPA for, and I was able to get a lot of conversions uh, because simply I had conversion data um, already on that campaign. You don't really need to use target ROAS unless you're an e-commerce um, person, unless you sell e-commerce store, but you can if you want to. But if you're like, you know, if you're just more looking for leads, just use cost per action. So overall, that is the bidding strategies and the overall best bidding strategies you can use for your Google ads. So if you haven't already, be sure to click on the video up there so you can, you know, watch and learn how to do Google ads for local businesses step by step. Now you know that the bidding what the bidding strategies are. See you guys in that video. Take care.